My name is uh, Jimmy from Cruise FM, and I do a thing. I host something. It's called the uh, Jedi Jimmy Podcast. As a lot of people might know, but some people don't, I'm actually a huge super fan of anything Star Wars. And actually, the month of May is big in the world of Star Wars because all of the original movies, so the the original tr- uh, uh, trilogy as well as the original prequel, were all released in the month of May in their respective years. So for the month of May... Uh, like I'm going to go till the end of the month. I'm actually going to be breaking down, giving my own personal little review of each individual movie. So I'm going to start from the very first movie that was released all the way to uh, Star Wars Episode Three, which was the most recent one that was released. So I'm going to start today with Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. So A New Hope original release date was May 25th, 1977, so 47 years ago. The original budget was $11 million, and the uh, original box office was $307,265,000. And the special edition release, so that was with some added scenes with better technology, were released in January 31st of 1997. And the special edition box office of A New Hope was $138,257,000 and change. When the movie originally came out, I would have been three. When that hit the theaters, I first saw it on Laserdisc. I was about grade three, so about eight or nine years old. Now, some character discrepancies. So as the movies got released, there was some slight uh, inconsistencies in the the characters. For example, Owen Lars in A New Hope uh, should have recognized uh, C-3PO because he was his droid during episode two attack of the clones because c-3po lived on the lars uh, moisture farm and one thing i learned uh, not that long ago from watching the mandalorian was the sound that obi-wan made to scare off the sand people also known as the tuscan raiders was actually the howl of the crate dragon it was a big creature that actually killed a lot of sand people in its day and when luke said he was looking for obi-wan kenobi to obi-wan uh ben said that he hadn't gone by that name since well before luke was born but that again there's some inconsistencies there because in the obi-wan series luke was a boy and so was leia and leia was a little girl and he went by Obi Wan, and they met him at that time. So, and also when Obi Wan said that Darth Vader hunted down and murdered his father, even though Darth Vader was Anakin Skywalker, he was actually correct. He wasn't lying to Luke because in the Obi Wan series, Darth Vader actually said that you didn't kill Anakin Skywalker, I did. Now, the uh, battle scenes that the the initial space battle uh, where the Star Destroyer was attacking a... a Corvette, the Star Destroyer missed 90% of the shots except for the one that took out the engines and and shields, but every other shot totally missed the ship. But... Princess Leia's ship actually hit the uh, Star Destroyer several times, but the armor and the shields protected it from the uh, Carillion's fire. And also, in the soldier battles, some of the guns were actually shooting faster than they should have, especially for the type of blaster that they were. It was going rapid fire, which seemed a little weird. So the the special effects didn't quite match the gun. That's just my personal opinion. And one part that doesn't make sense is when Leia was on the ship and she saw the stormtroopers, 
She didn't fire on them until they saw her. Then she shot one of them and ran away, and then the the stormtroopers stunned her. And also, Obi-Wan was tried to stop Luke from going home after they found the... Uh, the Jawas ship that was destroyed by the the Empire, their land cruiser. So my theory is the reason why he tried to stop him so emphatically was he knew that the family was slaughtered because, you know, maybe the Force told him. Now, the lightsaber scenes in this movie weren't that good, uh, you know, they weren't really focused on the lightsaber combat. I don't think they thought it was going to be a thing because if you watch the fight, they weren't actually trying to hit each other. They were just clashing their swords together, their swords together. They were just like there was no effort in striking anybody and there was no actual rhyme or reason to their swings and misses. So, and also the special effects. Now, the v- version I watched was the special edition, which had some added scenes because the technology was different in 97 than it was in 77. So they couldn't do some of the same technical stuff. The version I watched, so the special edition, uh, was one scene was definitely special edition is when the stormtroopers were looking through the desert for the droids where they were went to where the uh, droids uh, craft landed and the dewbacks in the background so they were the lizard things that they were uh, riding that had four legs that wasn't in the original theatrical version but it was in the uh, special edition because they were able to use CGI to generate these uh, creatures as well as the, the scene in the hangar where Han sees Jabba the Hutt and is talking to Han Solo about him owing him money. In the original edition, it was a deleted scene, the one in 1977, because they depicted Jabba the Hutt as a caveman. So he kind of looked like a caveman instead of like the lizard-looking creature that Jabba the Hutt is. He's kind of like a giant slug. Now, Skywalker's sound was actually created during the original Star Wars movie. So it was a special company that Lucasfilm created for sound design, editing, mixing, audio production, creating uh, special effects. So they had people that all their job was to create uh, visual and uh, audio effects. Like an example is... The sound of the lightsaber was because they took the took a mic to a fluorescent light bulb and put it right up to it, and it that bzzz was actually a fluorescent light bulb. In case you didn't know that, now my favorite quotes in this movie was uh, one of my favorites was actually when a C three PO said to Luke what planet they were on. Well, and Luke responded, well, if there's a bright center of the universe, you're on the planet that it's farthest from. Why I like that one is it kind of shows Luke's frustration where his life is right now and how gloomy it looked to him. Now, the quote from the Obi-Wan, from Obi-Wan that I really liked was kind of his description of the Jedi for Over a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights were guardians of peace and justice in the Old Republic before the dark times, before the Empire. So that was, again, one of my favorite quotes from Obi-Wan. Now, so my ratings, as, as I said, so my rating of the lightsaber duels, out of six, I gave it a six out of six. One being good, six being bad, because I don't think they were really focused on the on the lightsaber sequences. Now, as for the rankings of the movies, again, I'm doing all the Lucas-generated ones. I gave it a four out of six. There's a few of the 
Star Wars movies I like much better. And I'll explain that as I do the rest of the reviews. So that is the uh, episode four. And this is a Jedi Jimmy. Coming up next is The Empire Strikes Back, which is episode five. (laughs) 